Good morning. Why don't we begin with a prayer today? Let's pray. As we come to God, as we focus on his presence in our lives through the Holy Spirit, why don't you with me pause and in the silence, listen to this invitation from the Lord Jesus. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest for your soul. Now, will you offer to God the day before you, as far as you know it, those issues and pressures, the questions and the needs? And will you pray with me, Lord of all, King of the ages, Father of mercies, we give to you who we are and what we have. Take our time today and use it for your glory. Help us to give you our very best, so that in our thinking and living, our choosing and responding, our coming and going, we may seek first your righteousness and your kingdom. We frame all our prayers using the prayer the Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now to the reading of our psalm for today, Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Well, Psalm 46, I think, has become one of the great anthems of the Christian and the church during the coronavirus pandemic. It's been a go-to passage for worship leaders and preachers with this very obvious message to be still and know God in the storms of life, to discover in God a source of, of protection and unchangeable security when all around us is in chaos and collapsing. In the psalm, noise and stillness compete for our attention. On the one hand, we have the sound of the earth's core fracturing and the mountains crashing into a sea whose waters roar and foam. And then on the other, we have the noise of warfare and the clashing uproar of nations. All that noise. And then stillness the quietness of a safe space and the gentle stream flowing into the peaceful city of God whose divine voice brings silence to the violence of war. And virtually stillness has the last word. Be still and know that I am God. Now, as you reflect upon it, there are many ways to be still in the Old Testament. But the term we find being used here has the sense of to cease or to stop doing something. 
a bit like a parent separating, pulling apart two squabbling children in the home. Or perhaps a teacher breaking up a fight in the school playground. This is then, in the first instance, a word for the battlefields of the world. It is not a word for the world of contemporary meditation, for that pursuit of mindfulness which brings a sort of tranquility and calm as we focus on our breathing. Now, such exercises have their place. But biblical meditation does not aim at emptying the mind of everything but the present moment. No, rather, the encouragement of psalms like the one we're looking at this morning is to fill the mind each day with the beauty and glory and and peace of God as his word and spirit saturate our being and become the music of the soul. So we're not told to empty our mind, but rather to fill our mind with a sense of who God is and what it means to trust him. We're not then being told at the end of our psalm to be quiet or silent, though that may be a very helpful thing for us to do in our busy, loud, noisy society. No, the incentive here is to stop what we have been doing, for only when we cease our own frantic activity, can we begin to experience God's acting for us. Only then, says the psalmist, can we know that he is God. Uh, One of the unexpected benefits of lockdown has been precisely that, stopping what we normally do. The rushing around, the filling of the diary, the spinning of the plates, And in their place, we have found the room to cultivate perhaps better, healthier routines and rhythms in our lives. I said that stillness has the last word in the psalm, but that isn't quite true, is it? That, in fact, belongs to the phrase, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Not once, but twice in the song, the name of God is associated not with Jacob's father or grandfather, Isaac and Abraham, but with the name of a man known for his heel-grabbing, deceitful scheming, Jacob the Twister. I find it extraordinary that God is identified with such a person, that the Lord is willing to become the refuge and fortress of a man who cheated his brother and father, who ran away from his responsibilities until God one day caught up with him and wrestled him to the ground and then blessed him. But isn't that the story of all of us and each of us? And isn't that what God does in his grace to us in Christ? He comes to bless the broken and to call them his very own. He is known as the friend of sinners. He says to those who are running away from him, stop fighting, lay down your weapons and let me bless you with my forgiveness and freedom. That's the meaning of this psalm. Be still and know the grace of God as he comes to rescue you. Let's pray. Be still, for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. No work too hard for him. In faith receive from him. Be still, for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. Lord, we surrender to your love. We receive your grace to us in Christ. We find our rest in him, the ever-present help our refuge and strength. And so, in the silence, we bring to you all those whose hearts are troubled and whose minds are confused. Fill them and us today with your word of peace, now and always. Amen. Amen.